I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. I mean, all of the reasons that come to mind are, if I say them aloud, kind of wanky. You know, I kind of, I, I write because that's what I do. Um, there is an element of compulsion in it. I'm not sure I would be truthful if I said, you know, I would, I would insert, you know, bad thing happening if I couldn't write. But I do feel like something like that would happen. It is something that's important to me. And it's also just intrinsic to how I see and experience the world. Um, the fiction thing is a bit tricky because I started writing poetry and only moved into fiction for um, other reasons. And now it's primarily what I write, but I think it's more, I don't really make those distinctions um, for myself. In fact, I don't really make a distinction between writing and reading too much either. I mean, the answer to why I write is basically the answer to why I read, and the answer to why I read is because, you know, it's awesome. Like, why wouldn't you? Um, well, the, the, not, not very uh, praiseworthy reasons. I was writing poetry, um, got a job uh, as a lawyer, managed to get some time off from the gig, went travelling around the world, and um, just thought, geez, I can't go back to the law. I can't go back to the, to the corporate office. So I thought, I'm never going to you know, be able to survive as a poet, so why don't I just whip out a novel? Can't be that hard. They seem pretty straightforward. And, um, and yeah, you know, quit the job and, 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 and start writing after that. So I did. I mean, I wrote this, this you know, 700-page behemoth of a thing. And it was in every single possible way a spectacular failure. It was so tough, it killed me. But it got, you know, it got the bug in me as well. So after that, I just wanted, wanted to keep on trying. It is, uh, I'm, I wish I was different. I wish I could actually do both things at the same time. But I found that I, I really can't. So I'm definitely going to return to poetry um, at some point and at this stage I'm just kind of in the um, fragment uh, gathering and collation stage so I sort of just keep it on one side and hope that you know it takes care of itself. Um, I'm not sure that I really think of that term as relevant to append to myself, I, I kind of think it's it's to me it's more relevant in verb form. Like, if you write, then you're a writer. Um, and I've always written. I guess I was, I was a big fan of uh, just copying stuff that I liked in books out and making homages or you know blatant ripoffs of them. You know, writing poems where I would use the same rhyme scheme scheme as you know whatever Tennyson or whatever that I was reading at the time. So it was always a way in which um, I read was to write as well. So I guess from an early age. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think I think it was um, I can't remember. I think it was Auden who was saying that, uh, you know, all poetry starts from imitation, and part of that is is musical. You, you need to develop an ear, and the way in which you do that is just by sort of mimicking the way that a child picks up speech, I guess, um, the rhythms and inflections of the stuff that moves you. But part of it also is just um, is self-evident. It's, you know, why does this piece of thing uh, of writing, this thing, work for me? Um, more than that, and the only way in which you can do it is to actually sort of um, break it down a little bit, go into it, follow it, um, copy it out and figure out what aspects and components of it um, moved you and then try to import that into your own work. I'm not sure, and, you know, I, I don't even know whether that, that, that exists. Um, it's a tough question for me because I really admire uh, what I would call a coherent and unitary voice in certain other writers. Um, but the only approximation to voice that I can uh, bring to my own work would be, I kind of want to write what I would want to read, 
and what I want to read is always changing and developing and cancelling out other things that I've liked in the past. So it's, it's, a, it's a growing and mucked up thing, but hopefully if I just follow that formulation, the voice takes care of itself. I, uh, I did the bougie thing and got myself a studio near my house. I, I live in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and it's, it's embarrassing to say, but it's really helped. You know, I, seven min minutes away from my house, it's in an old convent in an ex-nun's dormitory, three by three metres, and it has a door, which is good, because I had a studio once without a door. And when I go there, um, I sort of just make the transition on the way into work mode and then when I'm there, which I'm most of the week, pretty much every day, I, I try to work, that's it. I think it changes with um, project to project. So there were certain stories in the past where there was so much that I didn't know and needed to know that I did go into the world and did heaps of research, um, got my hands very dirty. And, you know, there are other projects where I drew more from personal experience and memory. Um, the thing that I'm working on at the moment, it's also a, a function of how long the thing is, you know. I feel as though I've done a lot of research, some of it ongoing, but a lot of research for the thing that I'm working on now. But I'm no longer at that stage, so the only travel that I do is back into the, the book, The Beast. Um, and I always blank out when, uh, when the question's put to me. I mean, um, the, the formative poets that I used to read and um, admire like, like Tennyson, like Auden, um, Rilke, Elliot, Stevens, um, like I, I return a lot to their work. And among contemporary writers, I would say writers like um, Don DeLillo, um, Cormac McCarthy, Marilyn Robinson, um, David Malouf, Ondaatje, um, yeah, I mean, there are, there are certain writers who could see her that are always um, casting a shadow.